welcome to my session at the summit. This session is all about creating content that connects and converts on LinkedIn. So I'm Jo Saunders, known as the LinkedIn Demystifier, based in Perth, Western Australia. I'm known as the number two LinkedIn expert in Asia Pacific, and I'm a social media education educator of the year finalist this year. Um, the awards just happened in Sydney. And I've published a book called Get Good or Get Off, A Guide to Getting It Right on Social Media, which includes LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a powerful platform, but one thing I love about LinkedIn is, is the ability to create a personal brand. And your personal brand is, is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Now, this is talking very literal, but when we talk about the digital space, well, not in the room pretty much means on digital. So what is your digital footprint saying about you? Now, LinkedIn, largest professional platform with 645 million members and growing. But it's, if you look at the way it's indexed by Google, the way your profile contents index, the way your actual contents index as well, where you're showing up. And that's why I wanted to start with the importance of your personal brand. And content forms a big part of it. It's not just what you say about yourself and your profile, it's how you publish your message, how you interact with other people. So let's think about LinkedIn and why it is important. I mean, yeah, it is the largest professional social network. But 94% of B2B marketers are using LinkedIn to distribute their content. Every year engagement grows year on year and the user base is increasing. But it's a platform that doesn't take a lot of time. You don't have to spend hours and hours each day. In fact, the average user, and we're talking average here, and clearly I'm not an average user, um, is only spending 17 minutes a month on LinkedIn. Now, obviously there's, there's some averages going on here between the people not using it a great deal and the people like me who use it quite a lot. And they've got the salespeople who are using it um, heavily each day. So think about right now, how are you using LinkedIn to build your leads and build your business? So you could be using it as a business tool, purely to um, research people, your clients, look for people, find them on Google and allow yourself to be indexed. You might be building a presence, which is purely just having a profile so people can find you and it's clear what you do. But stepping up from that, maybe you want to build a profile for yourself. You want to be the go-to in your industry. You want to be that subject matter expert, that thought leader. We need to build an optimized profile that's on brand. You want to be sharing content that positions you as that leader. And of course, from there, you're going to get opportunities. Well, they're not going to come if you're not engaging on LinkedIn, if you're not being consistent, you're not adding value. And of course, leads. Now, we all want leads, and that's part of, part of the reason you're here in this session. But where the biggest make a mistake I see on LinkedIn is when people jump in at the very bottom and they try to go to leads. Now, by that, I mean, and you've probably seen these people, they connect to you. And the first thing they do is, yeah, hit you up with a sales spammy message, which we just don't want. So if you're doing that, stop it right now and look at how you can use your content to build those relationships with people, to be seen and to have people engage with you. So why are you going to publish on LinkedIn? Now there's different types of publishing and I'm going to go into that, but you want to be seen as the expert. You want to be seen as a consultant, a go-to in your field, a trusted advisor, maybe a keynote speaker at a conference, maybe a thought leader. So if you don't want to be any of those things, maybe you just want to be known. Maybe you want to be recognized. Maybe you're just looking for visibility, authority, and influence. And all that comes from having a voice on LinkedIn and publishing your content. But before you get started, you want to think about well, what is your voice? What's your purpose? What are you passionate about? How are you going to use, use it to position yourself? How are you going to infuse your personality? And how then are you going to use it to persuade some sort of action? And that, this is where the, I guess that lead conversion comes in. Now your posts and content, don't you don't want to be selling, but they need to be very persuasive in, in being thought of and being consistent so that people think of you in relation to what you do. If you don't have personality in your, in your content, you're going to sound like the Bob down the road. You know, you want to bring your thoughts, bring your, your quirks, the language you use, because people will be attracted to you and the way that you speak and the way that you do business. So let's think about now what, what kind of content are you going to be sharing on LinkedIn? So you can share blogs, which you could repurpose into articles. You could repurpose a blog into a document post. You could 
share video posts, you can add visuals, you can curate other people's content and add your thoughts to it, or you can create your own. But the big thing with content is share stories. People connect through stories. Stories told in your voice. So whether you're using text or whether you're using video, anchor your message with stories and take time to learn storytelling if you're not sure how to do it. And the technical side of things, well, you want to be making sure your content is engaging. And how do you engage people? By telling them you're talking about them or in talking about different topics. So as simple as app mentioning someone. Now, you don't want to do it in a spammy way. You want to do it in an authentic way. So for instance, you've been to a conference, you've heard a great speaker, you've taken a photo of them because you want to, you want to put something online, you want to share that, um, that story, share your learnings, do a bit of a reflection post about a conference. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a collection of photos. You want to at mention the speakers involved. So you're bringing them into the conversation. You're inviting them in. Use the hashtags. So maybe your conference had a hashtag. Maybe there's hashtags around the topics that are relevant um, that you can add in as well. And the other type of content or the way people can engage with content is reacting. So that's a good old like. You can ha have love, you can have you know curious, insightful, different things. You can comment, or you can even share other people's stuff, which is the curation side of things. And there's benefits to each. But really, sharing your own content and taking the time to comment on other people's content is where the value is. So how do you know if you've got content on your profile and when you were last active? So when I work with clients and I do profile reviews, I go to their profile and I, I've got a whole list of things I check. But one of the things I look at is activity. I want to know how active you are, what kind of content are you sharing and what's working for you. So on your profile, you'll see the articles and activity section. Now, if it's not there, it means you're not active, it means you haven't got an article. If you don't see the article on the left hand side, maybe you've only got posts. Maybe you've only got comments on other people's stuff or, or reactions. So the comments reactions show up on the right hand side here, which is called your activity. And this is articles. And you can click on either of these links to, to sort of have a look in. But say you weren't active or there wasn't much happening there. If you clicked on the links and say you have no articles, if you clicked here and the article shows you the desert island, or maybe activity does. And I see this often when I'm working with clients, particularly those who haven't been active for a little while because they're scared. They don't know what to share. They're a little bit overwhelmed and they don't know what to do. So you don't want to have a desert island on your profile, particularly your activity because that's everything. You want to share posts. You want to share videos. You want to share documents and you want to share articles, but all in moderation. So let's look at the content itself. When, you, when you're sharing your content on LinkedIn, you've got a few ways to do it. So you're on the home page, the very, very top, you see this box. So you can start a post. So a post is one of those short updates that drops into the home feed where you're at mentioning, hashtagging, you know, that sort of thing. You can add an image through the icon right here. You can add a video. So that's adding a native video that's hosted on LinkedIn. The shorter, the better. So short video performs better. You can have up to 10 minutes, but generally yeah, people aren't watching that lengthy, uh, you know, that length of a video. So keep it short and snappy if you can. And I'll share an example shortly of one that worked really well for me. And then you've got document posts, fairly new feature. So it could be like a PowerPoint um, slide set. It could be a PDF document. And what happens here is you have a document that can open up. You've got multiple pages. So you could create like a slide deck to share your information. So as I said before, you might repurpose a, a blog post from your website and pick out the key points, turn it into a slide deck with bright visuals and, and um, interesting text and make it, make it consumable that way and have, have some sort of call to action at the very end. And of course you can write an article, which is the, the link right here, which is essentially like blogging directly onto LinkedIn doesn't get as much visibility as posts, but there are benefits to it. And I'll just unpack what they are. So content types, I've mentioned a few of them. So articles we'll touch on shortly, but in terms of your post, so you saw those options, you've got text only. Now text only can, can actually perform quite well, um, particularly if it's written in, in an engaging manner. So to get engagement on LinkedIn, you need to be interesting. You need to be engaging. If your piece of content is more of a thought, it might be that people read and go, hmm, interesting, but you're not inviting engagement, so they don't need to do anything. It sounds obvious, but asking a question at the very end 
or making a statement at the beginning to get people thinking and then having a few dot points and then a question, that can help influence the engagement because you want to start a conversation. You don't necessarily just want it to be seen. You want to have people engage with you because there are benefits. The more people who engage with your content, the more chance it's got of being seen by other people. So document posts, PDF, PowerPoints, things like that we've talked about, native video and even live video. So that's fairly new to LinkedIn that some people have now got. Um, it's rolling out very slowly. But with li live video, you want to be really thoughtful about what you're going to do. There are some technical things you need to do to set it up, but it needs to be on brand. It needs to be professional. And uh, you know, having, having a selfie video while you're walking around, it's not really the way to go. But once again, it comes down to your voice and your brand. So if you haven't got that feature yet, just look out for that coming later. Now links. Now when you share a link on LinkedIn, LinkedIn doesn't tend to like it. LinkedIn have denied that they do penalize links, but evidence shows that they do. Um, just look at your own history. If you shared a link, generally you find you don't get a lot of views and therefore you don't get a lot of engagement. So you've got the internal links, which is where you're sharing a link to something within LinkedIn. And then you've got external links, where you're sharing a link to say a blog, um, a YouTube video, something outside of LinkedIn. But to know what works best for you, you want to just go back to your um, articles and activity. If I go back here, go to see all activities and go to your posts and see what posts are working for you. And you'll see what does it look like? What are the views? You know, that, that sort of thing. Now, here's a bit of a ninja trick that works. If you want to share a link, but you don't want to be penalized or you don't want it to be seen as a link post, you post it as is. So it might be a text only post or maybe it's an image post. Could even be a video post or a document post. Once that post has been published, you go to the three dots at the very top, edit your post and then paste the link. That way you, you can still have that call to action but it's not being seen as a link post and the, the preview of the link is not showing up. You've got to, you've retained your image or, or your video or document. So that's my quick tip to still share. Now articles. Articles are quite important on LinkedIn. They don't get a lot of visibility within the LinkedIn ecosystem though. They do in, in the sense that one is shown on your profile. So as I showed you previously on the articles and activity section. So you see the, the most recent article. You click onto the articles tab and you then you can scroll through them all. Now, once you get to a point of having, you know, 100 or so, it's going to take you a while to get through them. So you, chances are, you know, the person looking isn't going to go that, that far back. So, you do, so that comes to my point of not having a lot of articles. You don't want to publish daily. That's just overkill and it's just not going to get the visibility. I always recommend people just publish maybe monthly, maybe even less, maybe even quarterly. Do, um, you could do a summary type, type article sharing um, links to different blogs, sharing different types of content. So if you've got a podcast, you might write an article about a particular topic and have various podcasts on that particular theme or topic. So you can use them to, um, to put things together. So in this example, I've got one here, which is my speaking calendar. So it's an article with what's coming up. So there are different reasons to use articles. One article I wrote, um, you can see back in 2017, this one performed fairly well at the time. So how, um, you know, how do you spot a LinkedIn expert in a crowd? And the article name is how to find a LinkedIn expert. Now, one thing I wanna mention is articles are indexed by Google. So you want to think about the title of your article. Is it Googleable? Is it going to come up in search? This particular article, article I wrote here was a list of criteria to look for when you're looking for a LinkedIn expert. And hopefully the presenters as part of this program tick all the boxes. And some of them are probably on my list because I already know them. Because I've put the criteria and I've listed people that I personally recommend because I make it my business to know who's good. So there are people in my network I recommend around the world. We've got different specialities, different areas. So they're on my list. And that, that's like I said, that article performed quite well. So with articles, you want to think about what is the purpose for the article. So I've got two types that I like to classify them into. So you've got your influencer type content and you've got your authoritative type content. So what's the difference? So the influencer content, so the one I've just mentioned, the how to, um, you know, how to find a LinkedIn expert, I'm calling that influencer content because of the type of um, content it is. I'm sharing expertise, but I'm also talking about people. 
And you can look at the stats on the article to see evidence of that. So it's got 1,600 views, 45 reshares, 118 comments, and 199 likes. Now this is before reactions were a thing. Whereas the, the next article down, how to create LinkedIn graphics. Now that's got a lot more views. In fact, pretty much double the views, so 3,300. 20 reshares, so half as many reshares. 32 comments, so nowhere near the amount of comments as the previous one, and 115 likes. Now you might be wondering, well, what's the difference? Now the one about the LinkedIn experts, it got a lot of reshares because some of the people I've mentioned on the article, possibly re you know other people that reshared it because I'm talking about them. And comments, people kept recommending people that they know. So, you know, um, Bob should be on this list because he's an expert in blah, blah, blah. And I actually met a lot of experts through this article, people that um, were recommended through other people. So the comments um, were a lot more, a lot more. Whereas this one, how to create LinkedIn graphics, it's very much a consumable piece, authority piece about my expertise. But there was an there wasn't a great deal to engage with. It was a really follow the process, here's some tools, off you go. Whereas the other one was a bit more of a conversation starter. So these two, at the, at the time of capturing, the top one was the most engaging, the bottom one was the most seen at the time. Now I mentioned Google. So if you were to Google how to find a LinkedIn expert, my LinkedIn article ranks first for that. And it was published in 2017, like I said. So this is the power of LinkedIn, the power of publishing on articles on LinkedIn. You're not getting a lot of traction within the LinkedIn environment, but you are potentially in Google. But it's knowing what people are searching for. So doing your homework. Now some great tools to find, um, to find what people are looking for. I mean, you can use Google itself, there's um, suggestions. And then there's things like Quora and Ask the Public, which show questions that people are asking and you can simply respond to them write your article around that so that's that's a, that's sort of the difference between articles and the, and the power of them within um within linkedin and google but posts so what kind of posts are you going to share because posts get the biggest traction within linkedin but a post generally needs to start a conversation you can talk at your audience you can share what's going on in your world which can position you as an expert people might see it but may not comment on it or you can ask questions. Now, you can be conservative, you can be conversational, or you can be controversial. But once again, be on brand. So let's look at some examples of things that you could be doing. So if you're sharing posts, you can do image posts. You can even do multiple image posts. You can have up to nine images. Now, I always recommend to go in odd numbers. Three, five work well because you can see up to five on the screen. Beyond five, you get the plus whatever number, up to nine. So if you look at these examples here, one's mine, one's a colleague. Um, we've, in my one, you've got the five images from an event that I run. You've got the hashtag for the event, and we've got some app mentions which turn into the blue links. So I'm mentioning the people in the photos, and then the see more will tell the story. And you can see it's had some likes and comments. So, it's, so the purpose of this particular post was to showcase the event that I run, to show the fun, to show the energy of the event, to bring people into that conversation. The second post here from Karen, this was from last week. So I was in Sydney collaborating with two of the LinkedIn experts, Gillian Bullock and Kylie Chown, along with Marae Ryan, who was our facilitator. So we ran an event called LinkedIn Marketing Exposed. And in, in the post, you can see she's hashtag the event, which is great. And what we found a few of our attendees did, and we didn't tell them to do this, they wrote their own little summary post. So they took some photos at the event. They shared their learnings with the hashtag and at mentioned us. So, you know, this is a great um, thing to do when you attend events. Share your reflection, share your learnings, mention the speakers, mention the event, bring them into the conversation. So it's quite a powerful way of you know, using content on LinkedIn. Also, if you attend an event, you, you can share an event, um, a share a post about, it can be slightly vulnerable because vulnerability is is a way to connect. So I, I actually spoke at a conference and this, and I always sit in on the speaker before me at a minimum because I want to make sure that we're on my message because an can anchor into theirs and we can be fluid and, and that sort of thing. So I was sitting um, in this session, so I was talking about LinkedIn. The previous speaker was talking about mental health and suicide, it was very heavy. Fortunately, there was another speaker in between us to lighten the mood, but it really got me thinking and reflecting about mental health. So I wrote a post, which is a little bit more personal than usual, about mental health. And I've hashtagged mental health and are you okay, which is a movement over here in Australia. 
but you can sort of step out from behind that professional brand and sh show a little bit more of you. And I'll show some more examples um, of posts that, that work that way. Now quickly, this I mentioned a, a short snappy video that worked quite well for me. Now, one thing I do when I teach LinkedIn is I teach people to connect with conversation, to talk with. And when you send that default message, it's kind of like you're being robotic. So I created a little video saying, I'd like to add you to my professional network in my best robot voice. Now I don't obviously have a robot voice, but I discovered a tool that does it. And that tool is Snapchat. So I'm not a big user of Snapchat, but I decided to record this quick video and we use a filter. So the lovely black eyelashes and black lipstick and then turn my voice into robot voice, which is inbuilt and then download the video. So the video was nine seconds very short to the point. So I created this post on LinkedIn talking about personalizing your interactions and that message bit, you know, adding that personal message when you, when you connect to somebody, I've got the hashtags and there's the video. So you can see there, it was at that particular snapshot time, nine and a half thousand views, 86 comments, 136 likes. So it worked quite well. So that was a crazy video, a crazy idea I did in Snapchat. And the reason it worked, it was a very short video, so easy to consume, nothing to do with the video really, just getting people thinking. But it, it disrupted the news feed. It was different. It was bright, it was vibrant, it was quirky. So if you can do that with your brand, give it a go. You can use post and start conversations. So obviously this is me speaking at a conference and rather than saying, look at me, I'm speaking at this conference, I thought I'd ask, ask a question or start a discussion about microphones. So I, for the first time I was, I was using one of those, they're called the Madonna headsets. I've never, never used that before. I, I usually use the um, lapel mics. So I wanted to ask a question about microphones. Now, obviously this particular post is only going to appeal to people who speak. So people that present professional speakers, but I got 55 comments. So a lot of people engage with this particular post and to talk about, you know, how they speak and how they present. Do they use lecterns? Someone shared a photo. So it was, it was a great post. Now I've mentioned hashtags. Hashtags are really powerful in your content. It adds context to your posts. It indexes your posts in terms of what it's about. So people connected to you uh, that have said their interest in particular hashtags are potentially going to see your updates. And the recommendation is three to five hashtags per post. More than five, it's too much. And if you click on a hashtag, so say you were to click on um, this one over here, it says LinkedIn tips. If you clicked on that, it will bring up all the posts about LinkedIn tips, which there would be many because it's quite a broad hashtag. But if you use the hashtag for your event, so in this case, PMO Sydney meetup, which is a, an event I spoke at in Sydney last week, you click on that and you can see people are following it and you can see all the content on that particular hashtag. Now this one's not a very heavily used hashtag because it's a fairly small community and people may not necessarily know that they can follow it. But it's a nice way of tapping in and finding that, that content and finding where people are talking about you. So let's look at now some other types of content. So this is a colleague of mine, Charlie, who's a LinkedIn expert in the UK. And I really love this top, this post because what you, you can use po posts and content to make a point about your industry. So she's asking about what, what is LinkedIn to you? And she's making a point that it's not, you know, the things it's not, you know, is it for list building? Is it, is it for networking? Is it just for connecting? Is it, is it a place to learn, to broadcast? Is it, you know, alternative to Facebook, whatever. So she started a conversation getting people going. Now this was a fairly, um, fairly new post when I took, when I had a look at it. Um, but, it's that getting you thinking about beyond what it is you do. Now this one from my colleague, Mark in Melbourne. I liked this one because he was asking about his industry. So project management. So, you know, if, if you're in an industry that, that has no um, controls or it's one of those industries where anybody can say they're whatever. I mean, my industry is that way. Anybody can say they're a LinkedIn expert. Anybody can say they're a web designer or a social media consultant or whatever. So he's asking, you know, he's making a comment about it seems that anybody can call themselves a project manager. All they need to do is, you know, have a role delivering a project. And he sort of used some examples of what people are saying and then asks, um, does it sound familiar? And then ended with, I'm keen to hear your views on the topic. So he's inviting conversation. He's planting seeds about what it means and he got the conversation going, which is good. Another post he shared, a little bit more vulnerable. So I said vulnerability certainly has a place. So he went through a, um, well, he actually went through burnout and had some, had some time off work. And he shared the story 
of when that happened. Obviously, there's enough distance between, you know, between it, so it's not fresh. Um, but told his personal story, talked about the burnout. Now, he's not asking a question here, but he's saying something quite vulnerable and important. He's sharing a link to an article about the particular topic. Now, I've said links generally don't work. Unless the topic's so compelling and people interact early, then, then it, they can work. So this one, he got 110 reactions and 21 comments. Like I said, he's not asking for engagement here. He's just sharing a story. But obviously, people resonated with it and decided to engage. So that's a few different types of posts. There, I mean, I can talk about this for, uh, for you know for days and days. But um, have a think about yourself. What kind of posts? You know, what kind of posts are you sharing? Are you looking to create influencer content or authoritative content? Do you have a place for articles? And what what sort of posts are you going to share? And what frequency? You don't need to stick to a frequency in terms of every Tuesday at 10 a.m. and Thursday at 2 p.m. It's more about that consistency of doing it often enough so people can see. Now, you'll notice on the post at the top here, you'll see this one one week ago, four days ago, six days ago. It doesn't give you an exact timestamp, so you can never check which, which posts work based on timing or day. You need to track that outside of LinkedIn, unfortunately. So let's look at some performance metrics to finish off. So I mentioned the video um, that did quite well. So at that particular time, nine and a half thousand views. You can see all the stats here. Now the, the views you can see for um, for a short period of time. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's two months, and then the views will disappear. So you won't see that anymore. But you will also you will always see the number of reactions and comments. So on this post, you can click on the likes. So we've got 136 likes. I can click on the link and it will list all the people that have liked it. Now, I might use that information to engage. So Marianne's um, liked it. I might um, use that as a trigger to speak to her or to drop her a message, whatever it is. And I can see that these are the first people listed all first level connections. And as I scroll down the list, I'll see if there are second or third um, degree connections here. If I click on the views while they're visible, I can see a bit of information. I can't see the exact people who viewed, viewed the video. And just out of um, interest, a view is considered a view when a person has watched the video three seconds or more. Now, you don't know if they've only watched it for three seconds or if they watched the entire thing. You don't know when they drop off, unfortunately. So a view is three seconds. It just means they've stopped long enough to actually start to watch the beginning. So you can see here we've got um, a list of organizations. So we've got different organizations listed in order. We can see their title, so salesperson, CEO, founder, business, um, corporate strategist, and we can see location. So my most views are from Perth, which is useful because that's where I work, but also Melbourne and then a few in US, Brisbane, Sydney. So it depends on, the, so these numbers are going to come from who's engaged with the post early on and who's spreading it outwards to their network. So that's going to influence who's, who's viewing it. And then you've got obviously the comments. You can click on the comments or and see under the post who's commenting. Now make sure you do re reply to people that have taken the time to comment because you want to be talking with them. So my mantra is talk with, not at. Now in terms of your content, I just want to mention something in terms of um, the, the, um, the amount. I've talked about consistency. It's not about posting four or five times a day as, as a, your own content. It's about posting... Um, in, the, in the right moderation. So if you're posting once or twice a week, which can work, you don't need to post a lot. You know, some thoughtful content that's engaging. For every piece of content, this is just this is my own strategy that I recommend. So for every piece of content you share, I believe you should engage with not, with nine people. So if you're posting once a week, you want to engage with nine people a week. If you're posting three times a week, you want to engage with 27 people per week minimum. So it's that talking with, not at, because there's value in creating your own content for thought leadership, but you want to engage with other people's content as well to build your influence and visibility beyond your own network. So the talking with and not at in terms of content, so schedule, only scheduling content, it's talk, and that's talking at your network. If all you do is post, 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 you're talking at. But if you take the time to stop and comment on other people's content and replying to co um, comments on your content, that's talking with. And also in the tone. So if, if you just drop um, some facts, some information, you're talking at them. But as soon as you add a question, a thought, you're talking with them. So always talk with your audience where you can. And then networking on LinkedIn, which is coming from the, to, from the engagement piece, you've got three types. 
I've mentioned you've got the you've got likes, reactions, which are like is a type of reaction, comments, and 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 sharing. But in terms of the general reaction, a like is like a nod of agreement. So you're in a physical conversation and you just nod or go ah, oh, that's a that's a bit like. A reaction is a nod with context. So you've got them thinking about something and they're going ah oh, yeah. A comment is the conversation. And that's where you, that's where the value is because a comment shows thoughts. A comment spreads the message to their network and a comment invites more, more comments. So one thing I do with clients is I, um, as a starting point, is I review their profiles. I, and not just their profile itself, I review their activity. So I do a bit of an analysis. I see what's working, what should we um, start doing, what should we stop doing and what should you continue. So if you need some help with your profile and your content activity, book a profile review with me. It's on my website, wildfiresocialmarketing.com. You go to the LinkedIn services tab and scroll down and you see the options here. But I'd recommend the review is a great place to start because this is this implies you're going to do it yourself. You'll get my report back and you'll know what to do. Now, if you're not if you don't have the time or the resources and you want it done for you, then you can get you can engage me for other things, for mentoring, for profile services. But the, um, the review is a great place to start. Because when you review your profile, you want to clean up what's there. You want to make sure you're looking the best. You want to build your visibility, authority and influence the right way. But if you just want to ha- give it a go yourself, you were very welcome to do my seven day LinkedIn challenge, which is totally free. Um, to find it, you have to go to my LinkedIn profile. So just find, uh, I'm actually forwards, linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Joe Saunders or just Google Joe Saunders and my LinkedIn profile will either be first or third in the rank. Um, on my profile, you'll see the seven day challenge. It's in the web links. It's in the experience section. Click there and sign up. It's completely free. Every day you get, you get dropped a tip, something to do on LinkedIn to get your profile and presence moving. But feel free to connect to me as well. Send me a connection request. Do tell me how you met me. So if you heard this session, please tell me what you loved about the session and the fact that you're, you know, you met me through this um, angle. Because if you send that default, I'd like to add you to my professional network. I'm going to read it in robot voice and possibly ignore you. So you want, you want to stand out from the crowd and tell me how you know me and why you want to connect. Thanks for watching this um, quick video. If you've got any questions, feel free to get in touch with me.